Hi, I'm Dibley and today I'm going to show you how I weather plank wagons. So with that in mind, we're going to make this wagon here look something like this, or at least in condition of that. Now anyone who knows me knows that I have a threshold for weathering locos and it's normally at around £50. If it costs me more than £50, I probably won't weather it. This did cost me more than £50. I can't remember exactly how much. Um, I got it quite a few years ago and I can't actually remember how to get it out of the box. Let's try that. It's probably looking a bit more promising. Now, I'm not sure if I can quite pluck up the courage to do the loco yet, but I would say the wagon should be fairly fair game. So first thing we need to do is disconnect the little plug. And then disconnect the drawbar, which I actually can't remember how we do that. Probably going to have to look that up in the instructions. Apparently, you just give it a little tug and off it comes. Let's put that away. The first task is to remove the coupling. I've already lost the hook from it. Excellent. Next, looking at the planks, they're going to be a bit of a pain because it looks like we've got bolts or rivets or I presume bolts along there so scoring these are going to be a little bit awkward when it gets to the end. Also we've got these uh, marks here which presumably are from the um, injection moulding release, uh, I don't know what it's called, the, the pegs or something for releasing. I'm going to start by just scratching with this, oops, well, let's try again scratching with this knife blade and it doesn't want to it's, it's going to fall off there we go oops and we're off again I have to start this side of the bolt this time and we just scratch some wood grain into here like so so now it's just a case of continue scratching all the wood grain in I've got a bit of problem around these ejection plug marks. Hopefully we can sand some of those out with a bit of luck. Possibly not. I have to scratch them out. They do spoil it a little bit. It's just a case of keep scratching it in. Doesn't matter really. You know, as long as you get some in there, if they wobble in about in and out a little bit, it's all right. If you get any big gaps at the far end, just go back and fill it back in. You don't even have to go all the way. Occasionally, you can do a bit of a gouge out like that, just to sort of simulate a slightly misshapen one, and then maybe follow round that with the wood grain. Just go around it like that. Just pick up that side. Put a couple in there like that. Probably shouldn't be pulling down towards my um, thumb there, to be honest. But it's a lot more awkward this way. Last one, and that'll do. The next stage is to use one of these fiberglass or wire brush pens, similar to the fiberglass ones. This one's got steel bristles, and I just kind of work these up and down the grain, just so it scratches it up a little bit. Got to be a bit careful on this one because it's got the the metal bars there. And obviously you don't want to put scratches in this orientation 
on those metal bars. That should scratch it up a bit. It should also dig out any any of the bits that you've where you've dug out the planks to make the planks a little bit more rough shaped. Like for instance, I should do a little bit of that, trying not to come down towards my fingers, of course. And then just rough it up a little bit more. That really helps. Then we've got a brass one, and that's a bit finer. So I'll do the same again. Again, making sure I do not go on those metal strips because we do not want that. And then hopefully that's worked quite well. Finally, using a bit of what's this P120, but use whatever you feel works best. Just sand again in the direction of the grain, obviously. I'm trying not to hit those those metal plates. And hopefully, that'll do it. Next, using a sanding pad, preferably not one with blue on it. I'm just going to give the sides a bit of a sand. If these are wooden sides. I'd use the pens to scratch the um, the lettering on there, but seeing as it's flat metal, I kind of have to use these. Really, you only want to get a little bit. You don't want to get rid of too much. I wonder what PAL three stands for? Three pallets. Oh. Takes a little while. You don't want to take too much off. Looks like I've already taken too much off of that one. And then work on the other side. Yeah, scuff that a little bit. Maybe just a little bit more on here. That'll do. I would do the tops of these, but absolutely filled with rivets. So uh, probably not going to do that. Just checking the ends of the buffers. That's good for once. They haven't actually got um, casting marks, which is nice. And there's a phone message. Okay, I've gone on a little bit further and I've assumed that these side parts are also wood. They may be metal, but on mine they are going to be wood. And I've gone ahead and scratched um, the wood grain in again using the sharp knife and using the two wire brushes, the steel and the uh, brass one. So the next step, which is the bits where I start to really enjoy it, is uh, we're going to try and make the wood look a bit more, um, a little bit more tired. I've got a couple of colours here. I've got uh, this one, which is taupe, a crafter's, you know, these, these are just cheap um, craft paints from the range or somewhere similar to that. This one's dark grey, I don't know why they call it dark grey because it's really quite a light grey. And then I've got the uh, marvellous invention called water. Right, so I've got a blob down here of each one. Oh, one of my bristles is a little bit... Oh dear, ruined my brush there. Last time I put the cover on, I've ruined the brush, I think. Okay, that'll do. Right, I'm going to water these down a little bit. So what I'm looking for is sort of the consistency of probably a bit more watery than milk but I don't want to leave it too wet I want to take some of that off and then just find a plank and just strike it along like that then do one of the other ones doesn't matter whether you don't build much up you kind of want to build this up in in sort of stages rather than a great amount sometimes you might want to do two together let's have a bit of the brown just to give her a slightly different colour. Take a bit off on the brush, on the brush, on the paper. A little smear on there. Might go for a bit down the side now. A 
do a little bit along there. That might be a bit much. That actually might be a bit too much. So I'm going to have to take a little bit of that off in a minute. So let's reduce a little bit. Just make the brush wet again. And we'll just work that in a little bit. Doesn't matter if it all goes into the grooves that you've cut so far because we will use, we'll do a wash on this afterwards. All right, let's uh, have a bit more brown, taupe, sorry, taupe. And um, let's have a little bit down there. I always use a, a reasonably sized brush and it sort of then can make it a bit streaky. I'll definitely ruin that bristle. Uh, it's doing a well, strange thing. Might get, have to cut that off because it's going to end up adding bits of paint which I don't want. Now I'm stuck to there. Excellent. Okay, back once again after brutalising my brush. Let's have a little bit more. So like I say, a bit thinner than milk really. Um, and just find a plank and give it some. Sometimes you might want a little bit more. You want them fairly random. It doesn't really matter too much if you don't cover them all on the first go. Because we're going to have a couple of days of this. A little bit of that on there. In fact, it definitely works better the more you build it up over time, really. Might add a little bit of darker brown. I've now gone for a little bit of burnt umber. And uh, just going to have a little, little bit of that there. Maybe mix a little bit of it up. So it's a bit of a different colour. Take off the excess. And we'll just uh, do that one, maybe that one over there. Maybe that one there. Spin it round. A bit more grey. A bit of water too. Take a bit of it off. Oh, that one's a bit much. Oh, is that? Oh, just realise I'm off the camera. Don't know how much of that we've you've been able to see because I've probably been off the camera for a bit. Get along here now. Oops, too much again. So a bit more water. Take a bit off of there, put it over here. Right, let's go for a bit more grey now. Well, I'm making sure that I don't, don't get the, uh, what I think is some sort of metal plates there. I don't want to get those. You, know, you don't even have to be too neat really. As long as you're roughly on the planks, it's all right future step will kind of sort out any of the bits that look a bit rough I mean obviously don't blat it on and drown the poor thing but a little bit dark and that's what we'll probably do for the moment we'll probably leave that there clean the brush we'll come back to that a little bit later all right I'm gonna do um gonna do the metal plates now so for this I'm gonna use model color oily steel this is one of my favorite Favourite metal colours. Um, it's also the only metal colour I've got. Right, it's quite thick, so I'm just going to water it down a little bit. I'll just give it a little little strike across there, nothing too much. We'll come back and do some more to this later on. This will have some rust on it later on. But it's just to sort of like put the base metal down for a minute. That'll probably do. So I did actually, it looks like I've managed to get slightly off of, off of the metal there. So in that case, before it dries out, let's dry the brush off 
wash the brush and dry the brush off and then just run it up there. You might be able to encourage a little bit of that to um, come with us for the for the journey. Probably made more of a mess of it. Oh well, not too bad. Right, next bit, while I've got the uh, oily steel out, I'm going to put it on the buffers. Oops, if I don't go for the wrong colour. I like to use that for my buffers. It's a bit bright at the moment, but it sorts itself out later on. Trouble is the lighting is so bad. Can't actually see whether I've done it or not. Right, looks like the back of the buffers. Buffer heads are done. Wonderful, that can go and uh, kick around over there. Just doing its thing. Right. Now the uh, planks have hopefully dried a little bit more. Let's just uh, crack on with a little bit more of the planky. You know, it kind of it's appealing to me because you don't have to be too too ultra special, you know, too too careful. And if it does go a bit wrong, just um, just wet your brush and drag some of it off. Oh, it's got to take a bit off. Don't want to drown it too much although I have drowned it on this one. As you can see, way too much. So I could just wet the brush, dry the brush off, make sure the brush is off decently dry, and just run run back along it and take some of the paint back off. You can hopefully see, you know, we're starting to get some higgledy-piggledy bits. It's looking a bit of a mess at the moment. That's fine. It will come back in later on. It's all good. Right, I need to get some more on these sides, really, or at least on the tops, or possibly also down along there. Don't know if you can see that. Have I got that there? Yeah. Just along the inner edge. Oh, it looks like I managed to get some silver on there. Yeah, it's all a bit of a all of a bit of a mess. Looks like battery's going to run out, so I think we'll have to call that there. Okay, I'm back again. We have some power in the camera now. Um, I have dried this off with the hairdryer. Um, I've got an old brush now, and I've got one of my favourite um, washes, which is a mixture of black, brown, and water. So let's chuck a little bit in. Don't need too much. I am going to water it down very slightly with a, another drop of um, H2O TM. Or water. Yeah, I've got a sponge as well. Do you need an old dirty sponge? Right, let's make this nice and mixed. So, as you can see, it's, it is quite filthy looking. All right. Oops, we're going to chuck that on the floor. Right, so now you, I can do this the next two stages either way. I can either wash and then dry brush, or I can dry brush and wash. If you want the wood to look sort of more old and paler, probably do the dry brush later if you want the wood to look a little bit newer, do the dry brush first and then do the wash. So I just want to actually leather this on uh, absolutely everywhere, not too fast, get it all in there. It's where I find the silver as I'm actually drying. Right, get that right over all of it. Don't let it dry out though, make sure it all stays wet. And then get your brush, uh, your brush, no, get your sponge and sort of sponge it back off. The sponge will sort of make a bit of a mottle kind of effect. Um, change your sponge direction, dry your sponge on a bit of paper. I'd have made my bit of paper a bit wet now. There we go. And then, I don't know if you can see, it kind of got that kind of look now. Probably a little bit too, I've got a bristle in there as well, excellent. Always nice to have a bristle, but that's where that's come from. It's a bit difficult to hold this. Alright, hopefully there's no more bristles on it. Ideally I need to do round round those edges as well, so let's just give a little little slap around the edges. And just give it a tickle off. Of course because I want to get it in the wood grain. Alright. Try and get around the other side. Oh, it might be easier to hold there. There we go. Oops, need a bit more. I 
one thing I have forgot to do is I forgot to fade out those bits, but we can do those later. There we go. Hopefully that will find some of the wood grain and get in. You can see it looks, you know, it's tied it together a little bit more now. The, the planks don't look quite so so raw. It looks a bit pale there. Should we give it a bit more? Give it a little bit more. There we go. Right. And we'll leave that there. We'll uh, give it a little bit of a blow dry. Okay, we're back once again. So uh, hopefully you can see that the, the planks are all a bit more um, sort of tied in now. The, the colour differences don't look quite so bad. Right, got a bit of card. I've got that same brush that I was using. I'm going to use a bit of the grey oh, that I didn't quite use. I'm just going to work that in around. Use it on here now. Just going to dry brush. I want to get as much of this off as possible and, until it really doesn't look like it's going to add much on. And then just sort of do a bit of dry brushing. You can do it in the, uh, oh, sure, not too much, in the direction of the planks or you can do it a bit round and round. Um, doesn't matter too much. A bit of randomness. Try not to get on the metal bits if I can because the metal, metal bits are going to have their own treatment. doesn't matter if you don't go right into the edges, just because um, my theory is right in the corners, it probably wouldn't get as much wear. I've got, clearly you can see I've got too much on the brush. Still, let's try and get a bit off on the paper towel. But it's fine, you know, it's all about, oh, still more. It's all about you know, being quite random. It's had a hard, this wagon's going to have had a hard life. So, if you start getting areas where there was a bit of a heavy blob, just kind of maybe work rather than plank, di plank direction, just work round and round a little bit until it, until it sort of hides it again. Right, hopefully you can see now starting to uh, make the planks look a little bit older. Probably got some bits around here I could benefit from. Yeah, there's still a lot of, still too much paint on this brush. But, you know, we'll work with what we've got. Right, let's get the outsides. We've decided we're going for wooden outsides, so let's dry brush the outsides. Bit out of that brush. Let's try and get over there. We've got a little bit more left to come out. I'm not being overly careful. If you're not too careful, as long as you're not ridiculous, you get a nice, more sort of random effect. I'm just going to just go over there a little bit. That'll help fade that up a little bit. I'm just going to fade it with a, uh, it's like a glazy wash thing like I was doing earlier, but I kind of forgot, so I'm just going to fade it out with a little bit of, a little bit of dry brushing. It's getting there. So, I think we're still on the, still just about in the camera. All right, see that's a little bit more, a bit more faded. Could do a little bit more if I wanted. Could pick a bit more up. Got way too much now. Perfect. A little bit more in the middle. Oh, or a bit more there even. There we go. Right, you can still see that there is a variance in there, even though it's greyed out. The camera is probably bleaching it a little bit more than it is in, in real life. Right, so uh, that'll do for my plank effects. Okay, next we're going to have a look at just putting a bit of rust on those on those metal plank uh, metal bars up there. I've gone back to one of my slightly better brushes, although that has seen <laughs> seen better days. Right, let's turn this round. I'm going to use this side. I'm going to try and get a bit of this out without getting it everywhere. Right, so using my Burnt Sienna Craft Acrylic, 
just want just gonna make a little wet patch there. I just want to encourage a little bit here. I think I've buggered this brush up to be honest. It's really not looking very good anymore. I don't know what I've done to it. I just want to sort of just encourage a bit of the colour onto it. There. Nothing too much. Again, we build this up from a few different colours. So burnt sienna is nice. And we'll let that dry. Another colour is another craft paint, transparent red oxide or something there about. So let's just have a little bit of a little bit of that. And we'll just give that a little bit of a just a dibble in here and there, nothing too much. Stir it around. And then let's have a little bit of that now, which is the uh, burnt umber. So I just want a little bit of that. Oops, a bit too much. Probably want some more water in there. And then we'll just have a little bit more of that in there. Just, just a little bit. Doesn't matter if it all mixes up. Nice and watery. Don't want it too much. Probably. A... There we go. And then secret ingredient. My secret ingredient. And I learnt this from. Uh, Bunt's yard, I think it was. A little bit of Oxford blue here. I just want a tiniest little blob of that. I don't really want very much of it because you're not going to use very much. And just load a little bit up on the brush. Just put a little bit in the rusty areas. Not just in a couple of bits, not too much. You really don't want you don't want to drown it. You just want a little bit on where, maybe one edge or or somewhere like that. Just a little bit, just so there's a slight purpley tinge. Not much, we'll come back to that a little bit later. Next step, we'll go back to the uh, burnt sienna again. A little bit on the brush, we want it a little tiny bit thicker this time. Now we do want a little bit on the brush. Just put a little, a couple of little random blobs on there. And wash the brush off and just sort of stipple it in a little bit. Just make it a little bit random. So you want another just a little bit. I want it a bit thinner than you know, as the paint comes out, but not too much. So turn a little blob here and there. This is the burnt sienna. Oops, not on the woodwork there. I really don't want it on the woodwork. Oh well, I've got a bit on the woodwork now. Then wash the brush, dry the brush, just make sure the brush is half dry. You don't want it to run too much. Just sort of stipple it around a little bit. Nothing too major. Might need a tiny little bit more. Probably got a bit too much there now. Dry the brush. If we've got too much, just take a bit off. Right, let's have a tiny little blob on the other side now. Little blob over there. Hopefully that little bit of purple is still working in there a little bit. Oops, it's quite a Solid bit there, but so we're starting to build it up, making it look a little bit rusty now. We could have a tiny little bit of tiny little bit of the burnt umber if you want. Maybe find a bit at the edge or something like that. And it doesn't matter if you mix it over the top. because it sometimes blends in much nicer when it's wet. Right, just gonna do the tiniest little bit more purple. 
and it will be the tiniest little bit. Make sure the brush is dry. Work it on in a little bit while well, that's still a little bit on the wet side maybe. Might have done a bit too much there. Tiny bit more. Just do it at this end. You don't want to cover the whole lot. You don't want you don't want to make the whole lot purple. Just wants to be a little hint of it in a couple of places. And that seems to work quite nicely. I probably have done too much there. Just try and drag some of that out. If in doubt, burnt sienna it up again. It's not going to hurt. There we go. Starting to look a little bit like old rusty metal now. All right, I've just done, just off camera, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, is I've just done a similar thing to these metal side panels as I did to the, to the top ones. So it's got a bit of purple in there and a bit of uh, burnt umber and a bit of the red oxide. Just dabbled around and then just water just to sort of spread it around. The next bit to do is these little um, these little tie down latches. So get a tiny bit of uh, burnt sienna on the brush. And just give it a little bit of a tickle over, a bit almost like a dry brush, just over those. Nothing too major, so put a tiny bit on your brush. Have a fairly nice brush for this. And just take most of it back off. But you're not scrubbing the brush. Just a little bit. If you want to go for a bit of the uh, other brown, you could do a little bit of that as well. Just to sort of like shake it up a little bit. Okay, so we've done those ones. Bit there. Oops, seem to be holding my breath. Excellent. And now I'll do the other side. Alright, now the next bit is probably the bits where it really gets fun. You see where the uh, see where the rivets are, hopefully you can see that on there. I'm just gonna I've got a wet brush, I'm just gonna pull it downwards in a couple of places in the tiniest little dot of the burnt sienna. Oh, it's way too much. It's way too wet. Alright, let's try again. Dry the brush off. Tiniest little dot on the rivet. And then just pull down. It's not really working. Don't know what's going on with my brush. Alright, let's try again on that. No, for some reason, the brush isn't picking up, picking up any pigment. Why is that then? What's up with my brush? Or you can do it the other way, which is a little dot on it. And then pull down. Now if it's a bit too much, like it is on that first one, just wet your brush. And just run it down a little bit. Can put a little bit on so soon. Get a bit on your brush and just maybe put some bits on the, some of the edges as well. Maybe there underneath these um, hook uh, eyelets there might be a little bit as well. Not sure if the camera's picking that up or not. A little bit too much there. But I'll just make a wetter brush. Pull down. I'll do the other side now. So that's both of those sides done. Now, if you really want to, there's all the little uh, little bolts or rivets in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a slightly wet brush. I'm just going to put a tiniest little 
dot on some of them. I just want to make it a little bit wetter, just so it sort of bleeds around where the wood is as well a little bit. It's not working very well actually to be fair. I don't know what's up with this brush, I think this brush might be past its best, I think I might have messed this brush up because it's really not putting it on very well. I'm just trying to get a little bit of bleedage and discoloration around the wood. If you get anything too major, you can always work it off. I don't know if you can, oh, it probably helps if I actually put it in front of the camera. There we go, hopefully you can see tiny little dots and it's just sort of bled around the wood. Well, I bet both you and I thought that was pretty much it. But then I remembered, I've got some slimy grime nature effects from Ammo Mig. Need to give it a good shake because it does separate up. I want some thinners. This is um, it's either white spirit or turpentine or something like that. Oops, way too much. Uh, you might want to use an odorless thinners. And then uh, there should be enough in the lid mostly for all we want to do. So I'm just going to wet the brush with the thinners. A bit off, get a little bit on the uh, tip, and just put a couple of little little bits just in in the corners and the edges here and there. Gives a lovely sort of mossy, mouldy sort of effect right in the corners. Nothing too much. But... Give it a bit of hip, sort of haphazard with it. But go for less rather than more. You can always put a bit more on. And it does look quite vibrant, so uh, probably, oh, just there you go. There's an example of way too much. If you do that, just clean the brush back off, make sure you've got some thinners on it, and just sort of stipple it in and around, working back sort of kind of the direction of the planks. Some some planks it might come back a bit more than others. Hopefully, you can see. Might just have a little bit more because I I do like this stuff. Oops, way too much. <laughs> Got a very, very just work it back off, just clean the brush off and work it back off if you put too much on, like I just did there. There you have it, just a little bit around the corners and down the edges. Um, like I say, if it looks a bit much, maybe just drag, drag it down some of the planks. There you have it. Slimy Grime Light from Ammo Mig. Lovely. Well, if you got this far, then I really do thank you. I can't imagine I would have stayed listening to me wittering on about painting for as long as you have. So, thanks again, and maybe I'll see you for another video. Cheers.